Hey, Weather Warriors. In this video, we're talking about a potential major pattern change that's going to be setting up across the United States and Canada as we head towards early February, as the jet stream is going to take a nosedive into the United States here. I'm going to talk about the storm track changes, the temperatures, and much, much more for your area. Now, before we begin, if you're a weather enthusiast and like detailed forecast event breakdowns just like this, much more detailed than you would see on TV, we bring some extra goodies. And you want to be a part of a huge, rapidly growing community of weather enthusiasts just like yourself. Go ahead and click the subscribe button and uh, we'll get right on with it here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the CPC, the Climate Prediction Center. This is their forecast for February 2020. And as you can see, they only cover the United States, but we'll be covering Canada as well in this video. But you can see that they have below average temperatures, at least a higher than average chance up here in the north central United States and all the way up through the northeastern United States. So a big change, especially for the northeast U.S. North central U.S. has been kind of cold this winter, so that will continue. And then the southwestern United States, very warm. And then the southeastern United States, slightly warmer than average. Now, you know, I, I mean, the CPC isn't always accurate, but they have done pretty good this winter so far. And, you know, this forecast right here looks pretty uh, agreeable to what I'm thinking as well. Precipitation wise, it's harder to forecast this stuff, but you can definitely see above average precipitation here in the Northern Rockies and then the Southeastern United States. We'll go over that in a second. And then below average in, in the West as well. So the current pattern, the pattern we've been seeing here, you know, over the past week or two, and really, I mean, just it's been warm throughout much of the month of December and January, but we've had this ridging just building into Canada, okay, very, very warm temperatures in Canada, and then the U.S., we've had ridging kind of in the southwestern United States, and really just warm across the entire country, uh, so very, very warm, this is the upper height anomalies, but you're about to see this flip, now this is the uh, temperature anomaly, so you can see much warmer than average temperatures, this is the departure from average, 20 to 30 degrees in some areas in Canada, the U.S., 5 to 10, 15 degrees above average. Now look at this here. This is going to be uh, around the 2nd of February, the 1st or 2nd. Look what happened. Where's that ridge up there? It, I mean, it's kind of there. It's wet eastern parts of Canada, but it's kind of flipped here. We've got a trough sitting way out in western Canada, a ridge building into the western United States, and a trough sitting here in the eastern United States. This was a pattern that I thought would set up a little more often than it has this winter, but we might finally be seeing this. Now, what does this mean? I'll go over that in a second. We're looking at height anomalies. So the areas you get ridging like this, typically underneath the ridge, you get warmer than average temperatures. It's like a blowtorch of warm air down here in the southwestern United States. And the storm track usually rides up and around. You see these uh, black lines where they're converged together. That's typically where your storm track is going to uh, occur. Now. It occurs typically, the storm track is going to occur kind of uh, in between the troughs over here, the, the lower height anomalies and the higher height anomalies on the east side where there's divergence. That's where your lift is going to occur. The atmosphere is stretching out up in the upper levels, diverging, and that lifts air up from underneath because it has to fill its spot. So that's where your storm track is going to be, the northwestern United States into western Canada. And then obviously you can see here it starts to converge so the opposite happens they're sinking so it would actually be very dry here in the central u.s and also in the southwestern united states under that ridge but then you go back east and you see some more convergence you see these little blips little short waves as well in the main trough here so that would increase the activity for the east coast of the united states now if you look at the jet stream so those were the height anomalies kind of measuring the temperatures and and expansion in the atmosphere. Now you look at the jet stream here and it lines up for the same time around the 1st of February, it lines up. You're going to get a good strong jet stream that tracks and nosedives into the United States and your best bet for storms again. They're going to be kind of in the core of that jet stream where you see divergence and uh, you'd see a storm system out here with some maybe wraparound activity in the east coast. Now obviously uh, the details are going to hear change you know, storm-wise, we're just looking at the general pattern. So temperature-wise, you'll notice uh, it's not overly cold. You'd think with the jet stream nose diving like that around the second, it could be really cold. It will get cold soon, but 
what we have issue early on here we have an issue you can see there's still a little bit of ridging up north behind or ahead of this excuse me above of this troughing and then you got some ridging out here so the cold air is actually locked up over here and way way far northwest into canada and you know western canada so the cold air is kind of this is blocking the cold air from escaping into the u.s uh still going to be kind of cool in the u.s and uh, obviously this is a storm track that would favor precipitation more than it would cold temperatures uh, but still could be a decent storm as you can see a little low pressure system exactly where we see our storm tracks uh, where i thought the storm tracks would occur here's what it looks like now you can see that ridging occurring this is the surface now these red lines are the thickness lines kind of actually Kind of showing you where temperature gradients are the higher the numbers the warmer the, the lower numbers the colder the 540 line here is kind of the rain to snow line usually and you can see it runs up right along there so you know it's going to be very warm here up into southwestern portions of canada and you know, up into alberta and so then you get the cold air and it's the 540 lines all the way down into the southeastern united states so a dramatic difference here and look at that we got a big snowstorm hanging out into the east coast of the united states here around the first it's actually a blizzard now obviously details for that are going to change i'm not forecasting a snowstorm quite yet but this pattern does favor an increase in snowstorm activity for the east coast one thing that we've seen a pattern that i've seen quite a bit this winter is for the models uh in the long range to forecast something like this only to move 100 miles to the northwest i've seen this happen several times this winter and uh you know again we're starting to study the model psychology more than we are just what the models are saying and so i do think that this will end up a little bit farther north there's a lot of southeast ridging and warm water out here uh, this winter and that's kind of pushed activity farther to the north but this is has this does have the best look i've seen all winter for the east coast but again i do think that these will track a little bit farther north than what they say again in my winter forecast i did say it would be boom or bust along the eastern seaboard due to that ridge and that warm air along the coast so this would not be surprised to see a little bit farther north again that details are going to change there the west coast as you head towards washington north parts of oregon into canada you can obviously see a nice wave of activity along the jet stream you're going to get several of these late month so be on the lookout for that you can zoom in here into the northeastern united states look at that 964 just fun to look at right now nothing uh official yet and then the northwestern united states you can see that wave moving in european computer models also showing it same look a little bit farther south with that low in the west and then the gf or the, the uh, canadian is also showing this you know you don't see a blizzard here but you see the same general pattern look so this is a, a big change folks and as we head towards uh the 288 hour now this is around uh the fifth you can see that pattern kind of holds so the issue is you got ridging out here still kind of overlapping the lower height anomalies and so it's going to still be kind of warm but still an increase in activity in the east coast and then also right here kind of where you see that transition that barrel clinic transition from uh the uh the higher height anomalies to the lower height anomalies you're still going to get waves but they'll be a little more fast and progressive in the northwestern united states towards oregon excuse me washington oregon idaho montana and then obviously uh probably the southern tier of southwestern tier of canada the jet stream you can see kind of follows that dives into the uh, east coast of the united states picking up a little bit of a subtropical jet this is something we have to watch when you get these two to merge that can really increase the activity for the east coast and with the way this looks it would actually be a lot farther east than what we've been seeing this winter temperature wise behind that you can see other than uh the northern u.s and parts of the southeastern united states really it's cold up here but not a whole lot elsewhere obviously there's ridging out here so a few degrees above average and then again because of that ridging kind of overlapping the lower height anomalies you're not going to get a classic arctic outbreak with that look here here's your uh, cold air and you're wondering well that does look really cold temperatures in the sub-zero but again this is february and this is for canada so this isn't you know this is kind of typical the northwest north central united states towards minnesota could be uh, very cold towards early february towards the fifth or so and you can see that cold front extending all the way out into the atlantic so a little bit of a cool down but nothing uh nothing too crazy it's february 
everyone's used to it. And you can see the general pattern kind of supports that still pretty stormy in the northwest. And then uh, that storm lifting off into the east coast. Again, detail is going to change a little bit here. As we head towards the 8th now, you can see still uh, pretty, uh, let's see if this is the, yeah, this is going to be the 8th. You can see another nose diving jet stream here in the north, the central and eastern parts of the United States. Again, there's still convergence here, so still pretty uh, quiet here in the central U.S. So I think there's going to be below average precipitation in the central United States and also the southwestern United States during this period. Jet stream, uh, this wave is starting to move eastward, but you'll see some more that come down, and I still think you'll see an increase in activity in the northwestern United States with above average precipitation. You can see this rides up along the coast now, and uh, the subtropical jet and the polar jets probably going to be merging here, which would increase the activity for the east coast of the United States, particularly the northeastern United States as we head towards uh, later into February. You can see the height anomalies here obviously support that as well. Still ridging out north, so still not quite supporting an Arctic outbreak. Storm activity probably going to be in this uh, zone right here. And then as you head towards, uh, well, this is the temperature anomalies. You can see it's still pretty warm here in the east coast, but it is February, so average temperatures are going to be dropping a little bit. And, you know, that's going to be uh, probably enough for at least some snow in some areas. Now, still cold in the north central United States. Again, this is where my core of my cold air was that I forecasted, and very, very cold in that area. Very warm out in the western United States, 10 to 20 degrees above average for the west half of the United States. Now, this is interesting because obviously this is really far out. Things are going to change, but just for educational purposes here, the pattern does still look kind of similar with that troughing in the east half of the United States, although it's moved west a little bit. You can see the ridging now is farther to the west, off the coast a little bit of the west coast of the United States. It's nudging up into southwestern Canada. There's a lot of cold air and snowpack up here in Canada. Now that this thing has moved off a little bit, this is going to nudge the cold air down. It's going to allow the cold air to come down. And you can see troughing here, troughing here in the east coast. This is going to finally allow an Arctic outbreak for the east, you know, maybe two-thirds of the United States as we head towards, you know, the 8th or 9th of February. Again, this is really far out. This is more for educational purposes here on the 8th and 9th. The stuff beforehand looks a little bit more uh, likely. But you can definitely see that this is the type of look we'd want to see for an Arctic outbreak where there's no ridging that's kind of backing into Canada. It's a lot farther to the west. So this will kind of nudge cold air into the United States. If you look at temperatures now, you can see that. Look at that north, powerful northwest wind blasting out of Canada. Sub-zero temperatures, lots of cold air here. Now it's expanding across much of Canada instead of just the eastern part. And you can see that will uh, be able to come into the United States. Behind a cold front, there's a little a low pressure system here, so you'd have a cold front and the air would just spill in. Again, this frame right here on the 9th is mostly for educational purposes. Things will change a bit, but I do suspect that you're going to see a pattern that sets up kind of similar to that, like the jet stream like that, here as we head towards early November. Now, one other thing, if you haven't seen my 10-year time lapse, radar time lapse, it's 10 years of radar over the United States. Check that out up here. I'll link it in the descri or description and also up here. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Again, if you like these videos, subscribe below. We'll be releasing more of these on a daily basis, storm chasing, data visualizations, and much more. So share this with a friend. Have a great day, folks, and we'll see you soon.